charity. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For greater faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and a blessed fruit of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and For greater hope. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and a blessed fruit of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and for Greater charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and a blessed fruit of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and Glory be to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be the world without end. Amen. First joyful mystery is the Annunciation. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy work. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, and save us from the fires of hell. And we all souls to heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. The second joyful mystery is the visitation. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 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 Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, woman, and blessed Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, woman, and blessed 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory. As beginning is now and ever shall be a world without end. Amen. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from fire and hell. Third joy for mystery is the birth of Jesus in the stable of Bethlehem. She brought birth the firstborn and, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of our hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are Fourth, joyful mystery, the presentation of our Lord in the temple. Prophet Simeon took the child in his arms and said, Now you can let your servant go in peace. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. So as beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, the most in thy mercy. The fifth <coughs> joyful mystery is finding of the child Jesus in the temple. Three days of sorrowful service, they found Jesus among the doctors of the law. And Jesus grew in wisdom and knowledge and grace before God and man. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Almighty Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen. 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 Hail, Holy Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the world of eternal life. the bottom of mission, most holy Lord, through the Blessed Virgin of the Church. Amen. Chapter of our mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, Amen. Amen. Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood, soul and divinity of your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the moment of our sins and in those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I love you. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, we all you the body. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, the soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Almighty. Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. So pray, uh, so pray for the Holy Father to obtain the indulgence of this Holy Rosary. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among them, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Father Terry, pray for us. Saint Nation Leola, all God's angels and saints. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So welcome you all to our Marian Consecration Program. And... Um, so that this be a very efficacious program. Uh, starting to not, tomorrow, I will be praying for all of you. I'll make a novena for all of you. Okay. Thank you, Father. So starting tomorrow, uh, in my Masses, nine Masses in a row, I'll be placing all of you on the altar uh, in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So there's really no greater gift than to pray united with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So I pray that this, uh, this will be the, the best month in your life. Amen. Okay. And I really believe that uh, God will answer this, pro this prayer, that this will be the best month in your life. 
So I'll explain our, our method, and all of you know that May is the month of Mary. So this is a very special month dedicated to honoring Mary. We should always honor Mary, but May is for Mary, and October is the month of the Most Holy Rosary. So we want to do all we possibly can to honor Mary. Yesterday I was trying to be faithful to what Our Lady wants for the five first Saturdays, and that was my 20-minute homily I gave in the morning last uh, yesterday. And one of the things that Our Lady asks is that the first Saturday, okay, we, we make our confession within a week, before or after, we uh, pray the rosary, we go to Mass, we offer a communion in reparation for five sins, the sins against her Immaculate Conception, her perpetual virginity, her divine maternity, the sins of blasphemy against her images, and the sins against children. Uh, I said in my homily yesterday, I've never met a lay person that knew this yet, and I'm going to be a priest 38 years in a couple of weeks, no? We all heard about the first Saturday, but we, we don't really know what Our Lady asked, no? So uh, I doubt any of you, when you go up to communion, you have that intention to offer up reparations for those five sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So uh, hopefully, um, at least starting in June, you'll be able to start to do that, right? But also, Our Lady wants you to, she wants you also to read and uh, read and meditate upon the mysteries of the rosary. You probably don't do that either. You probably just go to Mass, go to confession, receive communion. But that's not enough. Okay? You're only doing half of it. No? So my... Uh, my uh, reading, my reading in honor of Mary yesterday was I, I went and I, I actually did some audio reading because my eyes are getting tired as you get older, no? So I find that sometimes if I, late at night, my eyes are tired, but my ears are still pretty good, no? <laughs> so I listened to 15 minutes of... Uh, the greatest book ever written on the rosary, which, of course, is The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. So I listened, and I stopped, and I prayed. Um, so I'd like to just give you a summary of that chapter, then we'll move into our specific topic. The Church has always gone through difficult times, uh, but this is probably the most difficult time that the world has ever gone through, and I think you would all agree with that, right? Yes. Uh, we've never lived in more difficult times in the history of the world as, as now. And I'm not cynical, I'm just, I'm, I'm vigilant and have my eyes open. We're going through very, very difficult times. Very difficult times. And I'm not saying this to discourage you either. And we have, some of you are mothers, some of you are grandparents, and uh, the fact that you're thinking about the future of your children, I think you should really think about what we can do to get them into heaven. So in the 1200s, there was a very serious problem uh, within the church. And if you know anything about church history, it was called the Albigensian heresy. So the Albigensian heresy was spreading throughout Europe in which thousands of Catholics are being pulled out, entering into this religious sect. So there was a young priest, brilliant, holy, eloquent. Uh, he had all the qualities of, uh, of being a saintly priest a saintly priest, which, by the way, he was. His name was Dominic. Now his name is Dominic Guzman. We call him Saint Dominic. And he was preaching, but with very little success. Even though he had, on a human level, he was brilliant. Spiritually, he was a saint. But nothing was happening, or very little was happening. 
So he was in a um, place called, in France called Toulouse, which is a city in the southern part of France. And he was praying, he was scourging himself, he was fasting and basically begging for help. And the Blessed Mother appeared to him and said, my son Dominic, if you want to convert these people, you have to, you have to preach the rosary. So St. Dominic started to preach the rosary and there were just droves of people that were turned to the church. Droves of people that returned to the church. So we're living in days that are worse than in the time of St. Dominic. So this is a time in which we, we, we have to have a very special devotion to Mary. And this is a course in which we're called to go deeper in devotion to Mary. Um, I think I, I know all of you, I more or less know all of you, some of you pretty well, others less. And I know you people, you love Mary, right? Yes. Father. It's not that you're the newcomers on the block. You already have, you already have a devotion to Mary, which is, which is good, but face it, it can go much deeper. And that's the purpose of this course is that we're, we really want to go deeper. And I really believe if you people take this seriously, you're going to be instrumental, many of you, in saving hundreds and not thousands of souls. You hear me? Yes. Yes. You people here, you're a very special group. You take this seriously, and me as a priest, maybe even more than you people. If I really go deep, uh, there's a lot of soul, a lot, not just a few, a lot of souls will be saved through your prayers and your holiness. So take this, uh, take this consecration program, take it seriously. The souls are at stake and you're not here by chance. Okay? You're not here by chance. You're here because God sent you through Mary's prayers. So you're here because God wants you to go really deep in your devotion to Mary and you're going to be starting um, by this Marian consecration to bring souls back to Christ. And with your children, I think you all have children that are, are possibly not where you want them to be. Okay? They're not exactly where you want them to be. Okay, offer this consecration you may not see your children coming back within three weeks, you know, kneeling down, praying four rosaries. Um, that probably won't happen. But God will touch your children. And I really believe your children will be saved because if you take this consecration. It might even be after you die. I mean, only God knows. No? Because God, God's time is better than our time. He knows when, where, and how to touch hearts. But right now, in your prayers and your consecration, it's going to touch your children. <clears throat> as well as my spiritual children, which happen to be more than 80% that don't even come to church on Sunday. So I've got more, uh, I've got more uh, lost sheep than you have, okay? So we're all, we're all in it together to try to bring people uh, back to the person of Christ. Okay, one, la one, one last story, then I'll, I'll describe the program and we'll, we'll visit a few of the, my few of the mysteries. <clears throat> the last day of April, last day of April, we celebrate uh, one of the greatest Catholic popes and his name was Antonio Ghislieri. We know him as Pius V. Okay? Pius V, he um, was elected, was, he was elected Pope and he was actually a Dominican priest. And one of the reasons why 
the Pope wears white is because of this Pope. He decided not to change his religious habit. And uh, he was only Pope for six years. And he lived in a very difficult time because he was living the time during the Protestant Reformation. He was living in a time in which there was a lot of corruption within the church. Living in a time where he just had a lot of ignorant priests that didn't really, didn't really know uh, the doctrine. But also he lived in a time where the church was being attacked from without. And we arrive at what is called the Battle of Lepanto. Maybe some of you have heard the Battle of Lepanto. The Battle of Lepanto is very much like St. Dominic and the Albigensians. The Battle of Lepanto took place in the late 1500s it actually took place a, a year before this Pope would die. And it was the Muslims that were preparing to attack the Catholics. The Muslims, it was called the Ottoman Empire back then. The Ottoman Empire, which were the Muslims, they had by far the best navy in the world. They had, they had the ships, they had slaves working for them. They had the cannons. They had the manpower. They had rifles. They had gunpower. They had everything to easily conquer any other navy. So their plan was to conquer the Catholics. Now the Catholic navy was, if we can use a modern expression, a rinky-dink. I mean, it was just... <laughs> very, very weak. Manpower, ships, uh, experience. So the Catholics go off to fight against the Muslims. And at first, the Muslims are winning the battle. And this was their intention to eventually enter into Italy, to Rome, and to take possession of the St. Peter's, the papacy, then move into the other major basilica, St. Mary Major, uh, St. Um, Paul outside the walls, the major basilicas in Rome, and desecrate them and utilize them to make mosques where the Muslims worship. That was their plan, and it looked like it was pretty well planned out. So what did Pope Pius V do? He, yes, he told the people there in Rome that they had to pray the rosary. So they started to pray the rosary, and the, the winds turned in favor of the Catholics. They caught the Muslim admiral, Okay. They decapitated him, and then the Muslims were thrown into confusion. And the Catholics won the battle against all odds. And Pope Pius V, interiorly, there were no emails or text messages. This is 500 years ago. He knew that the Catholics won. And he stopped a meeting. And he said, we have to thank God through Mary because the Catholics won the battle. There was an interior inspiration that he knew that they won. And as a result of that, we have, we have here in L.A. the church called La Victoria. In Compton and East L.A. I've given missions in both of them. No? Our Lady of Victory is, is Lepanto. Okay? Our Lady of Victory is, uh, is Lepanto. So October is the month of the rosary, and the 7th of October is the feast day of Our Lady of Victory and Our Lady of the Rosary. So I, I could just, and I could just go through story after story to show how powerful Mary is. Now, I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, some people of Mexican origin. You're here because of Our Lady Guadalupe. 
right? A Lady Guadalupe. Okay, I'm looking at Filipinos here. A Lady Perpetual Help. Right? We got a lot of Filipinos here, a lot of Mexicans. You're here because of Mary. I'm here. I don't have I don't have Filipino blood or Mexican blood. No, I'm 99% Caucasian. Okay, I got 1% Spanish blood. No, I went through my genealogical tree once. No, if it weren't for Lepanto and a later victory, I would be a Muslim. I'd be a Muslim. So the Mexicans are here because of related Guadalupe. The Filipinas because of related perpetual help. And if you have any Anglo blood, okay, you're in the European blood, then you're here because of our, our Lady of Victory. So we all we all want to thank God. We all want to thank God through Mary for helping us to be where we're at now. Where we are now. One last idea. Okay, have any of you studying history, studied the Benedictine option? Okay, Mary Kreese wrote a book about 15 years ago that Father Larry was really promoting and Mamie is probably aware of that book. Called the, it's called The Marian Option. And she wrote this book probably published about 15 years ago and this is what it is. In the time of Saint, in the time of Saint Benedict of Nursia, the world was very corrupt also. And he ends up in Rome studying, and he came from a very, very rich noble family, and he, go, he goes to Rome to study, but he's appalled because of the immorality in Rome. Like the modern university life in the United States, like it was back there too. It was pretty bad, and he couldn't put up with it. So he flees from Rome, and he goes to a place south of Italy, south of Rome, called Subiaco. And there he separates himself from the world, and he lives in a cave for several years. They seek him out because of his holiness, and a group of monks ask him to be here's his father abbot, but he's so strict with him that they try to poison him. No? <laughs> so he decides to leave those group of individuals. He goes from Subiaco to the famous Monte Cassino. Okay? You've heard, I'm sure, of the famous monastery of Monte Cassino. And what does he do there? He sets up a new religious order called the Benedictines. So he sought, he sought refuge in God and in prayer. So what, we're, what we want to do is we want to seek refuge in the heart of Mary. As Noah, as Noah was saved in the ark, and all the other people outside the ark, they, they drowned, right? In the deluge. We want to find refuge in two places. The Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's what we want to do. Uh, we want to find refuge in the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. All these things that are happening in the world, I, I'm, I'm not cast into desolation, even though maybe I'm just as aware of what's going on in the world as you people. I follow the news. I mean, EWTN News at night, okay? <laughs> Catholic perspective. I'm aware of what's going on, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not cast into desolation because I belong to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. I'm not. I'm aware of what's going on. I mean, if I were to look at it without the eyes of faith, I'd be, I'd be cast into despair, I think. Especially if I had children. Some of you have children, you know, that are teenagers, young adults. Wow, it's tough today to be a young adult, no? But if the part of the con well, really, what the consecration is, the consecration means that you belong totally to Mary. 
You hear that? You, t- you belong, 100% of your whole essence belongs to Mary. Your past, your present, your future, your children, your estate, your children, your grandchildren, you no longer belong to yourself, you belong to Mary. That should give you a lot of peace. Because Mary is very powerful. So the consecration to Mary, that's why it's a good idea. It's a good idea that we, we, we renew our consecration at least once a year. You know, renew it every year. I was listening to three or four YouTubes before coming here to prepare myself. And, and I listened to about four or five short 10-minute YouTubes. And uh, Father Mike Gately and other, uh, other experts were, were saying this. Why do we, why do we, Father Mike Gately gave a talk about 10 years ago, he said, why do we want to consecrate ourselves to Mary? And Father Mike Gately said this, do you want to become a saint? Hello? Yes. How many of you want to become saints? Okay. If you want to become a saint, Mary is the quickest, easiest, most efficacious pathway to holiness through Mary. It's the, sh- the shortcut. So we're all called to become saints. If we go to Mary, she makes it easy. She's going to make it easy. And he was pointing out, as well as another priest, that lives are radically changed when you live out Marian devotion. And he mentioned St. Maximilian Kolbe. You've heard of him, right? St. Maximilian Kolbe, his life was radically changed when he gave himself to Mary. Each saint has a different, a different dimension. For Colby, it's the Immaculata, okay? the Immaculate Conception. Then he says that John Paul II, John Paul II was radically transformed when he encountered Mary through true devotion to Mary, St. Louis de Montfort. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, she received special graces through Mary. And if you read through the lives of the saints, almost every saint that you read has had a Marian experience that changed that person's life. Amen? Amen. When I was Anna's age, in 1976, I'm betraying, you know, 50 <laughs> years ago, I read True Devotion to Mary, then I wanted to become a priest. I was a university student, maybe you know, a, year, a year beyond her, but I was already thinking about once I did true devotion to Mary, I have to become a priest. She gave it to me. I was already thinking about once I, once I did true devotion to Mary, the vocation was, was certain. So it, was, it was certain. I had some vague idea, but once I did those 33 days with my mother there in New Hampshire back in 1976, you know, almost, almost 50 years ago, then what happened? Okay. Your vocation is to become a priest and an oblate priest. An oblate of the Virgin Mary. She works. Works very powerfully. Nothing happens by chance. Everything is divine providence, right? Okay, so, the quickest, the easiest pathway to Jesus is through Mary. Okay. Uh, I I want to give, if you can... Bear with me. I'm going to give you five minutes of apologetics on Mary. Then we'll get into our specific topic. Okay, apologetics doesn't mean I apologize. I'm sorry about that, no? <laughs> apologetics means the art, of, the art of defending your faith. Okay? So I don't, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a Catholic. And they're shrugging your shoulders, sorry. I mean... I was baptized as a Catholic. No, you're not doing that. No, it's quite the contrary. Apologetics is the art of defending your faith, and one of the best we have is, of course, Patrick Madrid. Okay, uh, Tim Staples, Scott Hahn, some of these uh, these great uh, lay p- apologists. They're very good at defending their faith, and so uh, this is not a course in apologetics, but um, when 
uh, when sp people speak out against uh, speak out against Mary, it, it hurts me a lot. Okay, um, it hurts me a lot. Someone speaks out, it's almost like a it's like a like a dagger, because I I love Mary very much, and anyone speaking out against her, uh, I um, I suffer. So um, I'm just going to give you. Maybe you've heard this before because. Uh, Protestants and sometimes even Catholics say that you know, we should we shouldn't be worshiping Mary. Have you heard that? Yes. I mean, it's common even among Catholics. I'll hear this. You know, they'll say that you know you're worshiping Mary and that's wrong because you shouldn't be worshiping Mary. Okay, theologically that's true. Theologically that's true. We don't we don't worship Mary. So. Try to, try to memorize these three key words. It comes from Greek. Okay, you listening? Yes. Okay, the words are latria. L-A-T-R-I-A. Have you heard that word before? Some of you have. Latria. L-A-T-R-I-A. Okay, then the next one is hyperdulia. Hyperdulia. So that'd be H Y P E R D U L I A if you're you want to, if you're a good speller, okay? Okay, then you okay, then you have another one, protodulia, then you have dulia. So I'll briefly explain that, then we'll, then we'll move into the um, the essence of what we're going to be doing this week. Okay, Latria, the cult of Latria, we give only <coughs> Only to God. And Latria means adoration or praise. We only, we only adore God. And you have to specify this when you're kind of duking it out with Protestants or even some ignorant Catholics, no? Mm -hmm. So we, we adore only God. Okay, we adore the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when I walk, when I walk in front of the Blessed Sacrament, I make a genuflection. What does that genuflection mean? It means that I am, by means of a corporeal, physical gesture, by going down to the ground, I'm showing that I adore the I adore who's in the Blessed Sacrament. That's Jesus Christ. So we only adore God. Hyperdulia, dulia means veneration, and hyper means, you, pray, you heard the word hypertension or hyperactive, right? So it would be high. So the highest dulia, veneration, we give to Mary. And dulia, veneration, we give that to the saints. So it's not a bad idea if you can memorize those those words in Greek. If you want protodulia, we give to Saint Joseph. So, of all the saints, dulia, protodulia, Saint Joseph is the first in veneration. Okay, you got that? Yes, Father. Now, if the Protestant comes at you saying, "Well," You really, you know, you, you really shouldn't be paying this devotion to Mary, because Mary is going to distract you from Christ. I would suggest two biblical verses. Now we're going from Catholic theology to Catholic biblical theology. And uh, Luke chapter one, and it would be the Magnificat, which you're going to be, you're going, by the way, you're going to be meditating upon that uh, on Tuesday. Okay. So you're going to be meditating upon that on Tuesday in the context of the visitation. So they, they say Mary is going to be deflecting us from Jesus. Quite the contrary. Mary's going to be diminishing our devotion to Christ. Quite the opposite. I've been praying the Magnificat every night for about the past 50 years of my life because I pray you know, evening prayer. If any of you pray evening prayer, we pray the Magnificat at night. We pray the Benedictus, right? 
in the morning and before we go to bed we pray the Nunc Dimittis of Simeon. So Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Yeah. That's a key passage. My soul doesn't diminish the Lord, my soul magnifies the Lord. So the closer you get to Mary, the more you're going to be praising Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. Yeah, the, close, the closer you get to Mary, Mary's always going to be helping you to praise the Lord all the more. Doesn't St. Ignatius say we're called to praise God? Yes. Isn't that principle and foundation? <laughs> Mary can help us to live our principle and foundation. <laughs> And then the next verse will be John chapter 2, verse 5. See, so Father Broome can beat, beat the Protestants, huh? Right? Yeah, I know, I know, I know biblical passages. I could, I could probably take them on. <laughs> John chapter 2, verse 5 is, is in the context of the second luminous mystery, which you're going to be meditating next week. And Mary, Mary speaks seven times in sacred scripture. Okay? So she speaks seven times in sacred scripture. And the last time that Mary speaks in sacred scripture is in the wedding feast of Cana. She says, there's no wine. And then the last time that Mary speaks, she says, do whatever, do whatever he tells you. Can you give me better advice than that? Hello? Of all the advice in the world, those few words is the best advice in the whole world. What would happen if everyone would put into practice those few words? We wouldn't have Ukraine, we wouldn't have Israel, we wouldn't have these universities fighting. Okay, we wouldn't have them if we would simply do what Jesus wants us to do. Okay, so I've given you a, a few tools so that you can... Uh, defend Mary. Okay? Never utilize, uh, never be abrasive or sarcastic or mean-spirited. Uh, you don't get anywhere. But learn how to defend your faith with cogent, clear, convincing biblical arguments. Right? Like Aquinas. Like uh, Patrick Madrid. Let's use really good arguments to defend our Catholic faith especially to defend our Mother Mary. Amen? Amen. All right. So here's, um, here's, our, here's the method that we're going to follow. Okay, it's a, it's a very short consecration. We just have three meetings. So uh, it's, it's shorter than normal. So you, you don't have as much time is in other courses, so it goes by very quickly. So take advantage of the of the short time that we have. Okay, I, uh, I I I I love to start with you by praying the rosary. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, I've I've already prayed my fifth rosary today. How about you? No. <laughs> I just I love the rosary, and I I never get tired. And really, I honestly I love praying the rosary with you people. Can I tell you why? Because I feel that I'm, I'm a, we're brothers and sisters when we pray the rosary. I feel there's a real family when we pray the rosary. Isn't that true? Because we all love Mary. There's a real bond of harmony among us. And also, I, I, I honestly believe that up to this point, I am pretty fervent. I think I'm a fervent priest, no? I hope that hopefully it won't change. I'm fervent. But you are too. And you're fervent. He encourages me to be even more fervent, no? So people praying the rosary fervently, that rosary prayed is powerful. So I'd like to start off with your permission at 6.30. Let's pray the rosary. Now, if you're traveling and you can't make it, fine. No? But um, this is part of our program, to pray the rosary together. Hmm? Yeah. And if you want to pray five rosaries every day, you can welcome me. Okay. <laughs> But at least get one in a day, okay? One a day. Okay. Then, uh, the, the, the heart of this program is 
The heart of this program is uh, what you do on your own. And how many, of you, how many of you have already done the spiritual exercises? Okay, how many of you uh, were with me with the Acts of the Apostles? How many of you have done the another consecration program? Well, you're old timers, huh? <laughs> you're veterans. I should probably I should probably give the microphone to half of you people. You could probably give the talk, okay? So what I'm going to say is not novelty. It's simply you you have to you have to be faithful to your holy hour. I don't want to try, um, as we see in New York, try to kill a dead horse, okay? Know that expression, me try to kill a dead horse? Yeah. Not, not to be overly repetitive, but I think it's a good idea to keep reminding us we want to be faithful to our holy hour. And the book that I give to you, that most of you have it, some of you have bought the book, uh, it, I think it's pretty easy to follow. You've got the biblical passage, you've got the commentary on it, so it's all uh, the, it's all laid out for you. It's just a matter of finding the finding the time and the place to do it. And I don't want to I don't want to kill a dead horse, but I I if you can do it early in the morning, if you can, I would suggest you do it early in the morning. If you can't, because you have to get up at 3 o'clock to go to work. Okay, when you come back from work, then get it in. But I would try to do your holy hour, not to always put it off until 8, 11.30 at night, because you end up by falling asleep during your holy hour. Okay? So give some prime time and find, find a place. You know, find a place. Uh, if you want to pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament, so much the better. If not some quiet place in your room where you have silence and uh, this uh, maybe this does not have to be said but especially when you're doing your meditation you should have you should have a beautiful image of your bless of the blessed mother in front of you because you're going to be talking to Jesus but you're going to be you're going to be talking to Mary. Okay? You're going to be having the loving conversations with Mary. So make sure that you have, you all have an image of Mary in your home, right? Yes, Father. So make sure you have your, your meditation in front of that. Light a couple of candles. Uh, maybe even burn some incense, but not marijuana, okay? <laughs> okay, so you've got a beautiful image of Mary. You've got candles, you've got incense. You got quiet, and then give yourself an hour. Okay, give yourself an hour. It takes it takes time to warm up. Okay, it takes time to warm up. If any of you, some of your athletes, I mean, I I'm a born athlete. You you got on that baseball field, you got to warm up an hour before, otherwise you're going to pull a hamstring and you're going to be out for three months. Okay. So there is spiritual warm-up too. You've got to warm up to God. You like it, you have to change gears going from the contemplative, the active life to the contemplative life. Changing gears. So give yourself... And sometimes the graces, the abundant graces, only come the last 10 minutes of your meditation. And that's why it's a good idea to persevere. It might be you're kind of struggling through it, and then you arrive at 45 minutes, 50 minutes, a lot of lights, a lot of insights, a lot of peace, a lot of joy, a lot of consolation. The grace of God is really flowing. That was 50 minutes, but if you, you got up after 48 minutes, you lost it. <laughs> so the key is perseverance. Is perseverance. Okay. So this week, okay, this week, uh, you're going to be doing the joyful mysteries. Okay, you're going to be doing the joyful mysteries, what we prayed about 45 minutes ago. You're going to be doing the joyful mysteries. Now, some of you who are mathematically inclined are going to be thinking, well, Father, Father, you know the joyful mysteries, there are five. Aren't there seven days in the week? Okay, you're right, okay. 
but have a remedy. Couple of repetitions. Couple of repetitions. So you have five. So two of those you will repeat. Now this is pure Ignatius of Loyola. By now you've heard me speak about Ignatian repetition, right? Why does St. Ignatius say we should do repetition? Yep. Two reasons. You hit one of them, but there's another reason why. One might be because probably of those five meditations, maybe one of them you didn't really do it that well. Maybe there was uh, some resistance. So you go back to undo the resistance because there were many graces, but maybe because of sensuality or laziness or pride, the grace was not flowing as much. So go there and do a repetition so that you can unblock the resistance that you had. The second is, Celine said, because there's more graces there. And Francis de Sales gives the example, remember, you know, a bee will go to one flower and then, remember, they suck out the, uh, the nectar or the honey and then comes back. Why? Because there's still nectar. So you experience a lot of consolation, but there's still more consolation that God wants to give you. That's Ignatius. So in this week of those five meditations, one of them is going to be one that seemed to really kind of jump out at you. Going to really jump out at you. So what I'm going to do, the, the, the last part of the talk this evening is the following. <clears throat> I could take the five and give you various virtues that you can glean from that, but I think I'll just take one of the joyful mysteries and spend just a few minutes going through it, and I'll give you, I'll give you an Ignatian contemplation. Okay, I'll give you an Ignatian contemplation. By now, all of you are ex experts in that, right? So a contemplation means, remember the different steps of a contemplation? You place yourself in the place. Imagine the persons, okay? You imagine what their words are, what, what their action is, and then you derive fruit from that. So you basically be, you become a part of that scene. As I said, using an analogy, when you go to a movie, what happens? When you go to the movie, you are seeing the movie. So the contemplation is different than the movie because you're not a pa passive spectator, but rather you're an active participant. Okay? Big difference, right? Yes, Father. Instead of being a passive spectator, just eating popcorn, watching a movie there, rather you're becoming an active participant. So uh, let's flip the coin and, oh, okay. Speak about the visitation. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the visitation. Okay, there is a connection between the Annunciation and the visitation. So once Mary says, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be done to me according to thy word, that was the most important moment in the history of the world. Did you know that? Then when Jesus dies and rises from the dead, okay, there's the, there's the incarnation, and then you have the what's called the Paschal Mystery. So the incarnation and the Paschal Mystery are the two, the two most important moments in the history of our salvation. But it starts with the incarnation. The incarnation is when Mary says yes to the angel. So Mary says yes to the angel, and then... As a result of her yes, Mary conceived Jesus in her most pure womb. John Paul II says, Mary's yes to the angel is like our amen when we receive Holy Communion. Because what happened when Mary said yes, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
you have the Eucharistic incarnation in the most pure womb of Mary. When the priest says the body of Christ, you say, Amen, you have a Eucharistic incarnation in the very depths of your soul. Isn't that beautiful? John Paul II. No? I love that. And as a result of that, Mary goes in haste to bring Jesus to her cousin Elizabeth. So, if you receive Holy Communion, you people go and you receive Holy Communion. If you receive Holy Communion, that should motivate you to bring Christ to others. In other words, that, that is a call for you to be a missionary. Yeah? yeah? Okay, Communion is not meant just for yourself, but Communion is meant to transform you into a missionary and when you're bringing the person of Christ to the whole world. Amen? Amen. Alright. Now Mary, Mary Mary goes in haste. There's a lot in that. Mary goes in haste. When you receive inspirations from the Holy Spirit, do you accept them and move in haste? Hello? Ah, I wonder, no? I would say maybe sometimes. But Mary's teaching us, once you receive an inspiration from the Holy Spirit, uh, not to wait, but follow it right away. The word in English would be with alacrity. Okay? Alacrity. There's a good college word, right? Alacrity, what does that mean in English? Moving quickly. Not delaying, not dragging your feet. So Mary teaches us, you have an inspiration, say yes. And once you say yes to inspiration from God, God is going to give you even more blessings. Now what you might do in this, Mary's going to be traveling to a place called Ein Karim, okay, in the hill country. And she's going to be traveling about 80 kilometers, which would be close to about 55 miles in the hill country. Mary went in haste. What? Maybe you can imagine that you're walking side by side with Mary. You're walking side by side with Mary and Mary is a Eucharistic procession. Right? Doesn't she have Jesus? She's a Eucharistic Corpus Christi. You're accompanying Mary in this beautiful Eucharistic procession. During this journey, it's going to be probably about, yeah, maybe about four days. You know, she's traveling, it's going to be about whew, 55 miles, maybe she's going to travel 12, 13 miles a day. You can be talking with Mary the whole time. That'd be beautiful. Anything that's on your mind, you can talk to Mary. And she's going to listen to you. And she understands you. She wants to console you. She wants to comfort you. She wants to enlighten you. She wants to... Now, she's probably walking faster than you, okay? And you might say, slow down. She might say, well, pick, pick up the pace a little bit. Might have to make a deal, okay? <laughs> Mary, Mary wants you to walk at a fast pace in holiness, okay? She doesn't want you to drag your feet. So, you know, you can spend... I'm giving you scenes. You can spend the whole hour just imagining you're traveling with Mary with the purpose of arriving at her cousin's house but you're, you're, you're traveling with Mary in this Eucharistic procession. So Mary arrives and it's a surprise visit. It's a surprise visit. Mary arrives and it says, Mary greets her cousin Elizabeth. Try to imagine that greeting. What did she say? Well, 
Bible commentators would probably say she said shalom. Why shalom? Because that is, that is the greeting that the Hebrews, even to the very day, they greet each other with, with shalom. And shalom actually means peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is a very beautiful greeting. Now, of all of the biblical passages, the pro-life biblical passages, this is perhaps the best pro-life biblical passage you have in, in the whole Bible. As Mary greets Elizabeth, and what happens? The baby leaps in the womb of Elizabeth. And then Elizabeth says, Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me? Because at the sound of your greeting, the baby leapt in my womb. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. There you have the Hail Mary. Yep. There you have the Hail Mary. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And then from that, Mary opens up her mind, opens up her heart, opens up her lips, and she gives us that beautiful prayer that we call the Magnificat. Which is, Mary says, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he's looked upon the lowliness of his hand. Henceforth, all generations will call me blessed, because he has done great things for me, and holy is his name. So, the Magnificat could spend time just relishing that beautiful prayer of the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Louis de Montfort says that that is an excellent prayer to say after Holy Communion. And true devotion to Mary says that that's an excellent prayer to pray after Holy Communion because you're praising Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, through the Magnificat. This is the best pro-life passage, and for this reason, you have two pregnant women. What would modern society say about these two women? One is very old. The other is very young. What would modern science and modern doctors and nurses say today about that? You know. The old, the old woman, you shouldn't have it because you're going to be placed in risk your life, but also you're going to be placing in risk the life of this child. Better not to have it. Whereas the young one, she was probably only about 16 years old, a teenager, and what will the doctor say today? Well, you're, you're just too young to have it. You're not mature enough to have that child. So they would say abortion, right? But both of them said yes to life. And as a result of that, they both bring forth the two greatest men born of women. Because... They trusted in God. <laughs> the old woman, her name was Elizabeth. She brought forth St. John the Baptist. And Jesus says, of all men born of women, none was greater than John the Baptist. And Jesus, Mary brought forth Jesus. So there you have a wonderful passage promoting life. From the moment of conception until natural death, life is sacred. 
All right. Now, what you can do, last idea I'd like to lay in your heart, is imagine, imagine a typical day, a typical day in the home of Ein Karin between Elizabeth and Mary. It's not written, but what do you think they did? Well, you have water in your house, right? And you have running water. You probably have people that bring water, huh? They didn't have water the way we have water. They would have to go to a pub, they'd have to go to the well, and they'd have to wait online, and then the women would have to bring the water from the well back to their house. Mary would have to do that maybe more than once a day. What would be the household chores? Mary would have to clean the house. She'd have to sweep out the dirt. She'd have to clean the doors, clean the windows. What about cooking? Do you think Mary cooked? Do you think she was a good cook? <laughs> Probably a very good cook. Now, we never think about this because we just think Mary going there, greeting Elizabeth, and that's it. But you have to read in between the lines. This is the Ignatian contemplation to try to imagine what would have been a typical day in the home. That would be a wonderful contemplation for all of you. Okay, what about, what about preparing a meal? Was everything right there, sitting on the sink, ready to be? No. She would have... She, she would have to go to the market and probably go to different, different markets. Had to go one for the vegetable, another one would be for the fruit, another one would be maybe for the cheese, another one would be maybe for the milk, the other one would probably be maybe for cereal. So Mary would have to go shopping. Do you like to shop? <laughs> well, uh, Mary would wait in line. Are you, are you well-mannered when you're waiting on lines? Hello? Probably not. No? You think of Mary's waiting in line? See how, how patient and kind and merciful Mary is? And what about us? No? Sometimes the other way around, huh? All these domestic virtues. And imagine how how delicate Mary was in helping this. Imagine Mary helping Elizabeth to get up. Maybe Elizabeth, you know, she gets very close to the due date. She's maybe 75 years old. How, how delicate and kind and tender Mary was. There's another long topic. How do we treat the elderly in our society today? Hello? We've got abortion, and then we've got euthanasia, right? How do we treat the elderly? Do any of you have any of your mothers or father that are still living? Any of you? My mom is 93. <laughs> I try to bend over backwards to try to be as helpful as I possibly can because the modern society is pushing the elderly away. So there's a lot in this mystery. Mary went there to help out an elderly person. An elderly person, also an elderly person with a child. There are so many beautiful lessons that we can learn from the visitation. So this is just one of the five gems. And the last thing I'd like to say is usually the fruit that you're going to see in the pamphlet says you want to be praying for charity. Fraternal charity means fraternal love. So let's ask the Blessed Virgin Mary this very night to, for the grace to go really deep in our devotion to Mary. And this will be the best month in our life. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among us. Bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins and our death. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen.
Why do we say an extra Hail Mary? Because it's Eric's birthday today, so we'll say one. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Feliz cumpleaños. <laughs> Father, you're making me blush. <laughs> At my age, I could be dangerous. Thank you all very much for your prayers. Um, welcome everyone to the um, this wonderful consecration. And I just want to review a couple of things um, regarding the program. So again, Father Ed said this will be um, it will be three uh, three weeks, but actually uh, a little bit more than that because we'll have. We're going to be meeting on May 5th, which is Cinco de Mayo. It's mi cumpleaños. And um, the 12th and the 19th, all at 6.30 p.m. And then the uh, consecration is going to be on May 24th, which is a Friday at 7.15 here in the small church. So um, you probably already know those details. So um, the other thing is, is that we're going to be, we're using Father Ed's consecration book, which is a masterpiece. Um, many of you have probably already done this before, and you know, um, you know how to, to use it. So if you don't have one of these, we have more over here. Uh, Fran can sell you one, they're $16 a piece. So make sure you, you have one of these, because you'll need this to go through the uh, consecration program. And so this week, we're going to be covering the first seven days, the week one, days one through seven, and in this book, days six and seven will be repetitions, okay? So we'll be doing, we're doing the um, Joyful Mysteries, so days six and seven will be the repetitions, and then we'll, um, we'll go through, continue that next week. We're also going to be uh, starting our sharing groups this evening. Uh, we've set aside some time this evening for that, so if I could get all the facilities.